All right, we can start. So, like we've discussed last time, uh, we have uh, classified uh, the tasks into three parts, basically, where you have um, an image generator, then an image cons uh, composer, and finally the storyboard and the visualizer, right? So, um, what I've what I have here for you today is like basically how you can approach the challenge. So, what I did is separately, uh, uh, like, compose each each task into a single uh, Python file or a class, basically, where that like the entire uh, internet functionalities are uh, implemented. Then on a pipeline on a notebook, I'll show you how it's basically connected and automated entirely. So um, we have concepts basically the JSON, if you have seen, uh, like I've given you. And uh, to start off, let's just check out how to approach the image generator. So if you remember, uh, uh, like. I had given you some resources, especially regarding uh, the three uh, widely used open source way of generating uh, image. It was Focus API and Automatic 11 and Automatic 11 and ConfUI. So, if you have searched for uh, an API implementation or use it on how to use them from an API perspective, maybe you have stumbled upon like uh, this repos, the Kony Shadow for Focus API, and the actual Automatic 11 and GitHub uh, repo for Stable Diffusion. And um, from a general overview, uh, you can really like, if you have seen how Automatic 11 works, and uh, Focus API works, and how Stable Diffusion as a general work, like, uh, you you will surely uh, choose automatic 11 because it's more or less uh, dynamic. You can choose your own width and height and so on. Um, and for implementation purposes, if you just go here, maybe let me share my entire screen with you. You can see my screen, right? Hello, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, we do. So, if you just go to Hacking Face and search for automatic API. Uh, Okay. Uh, the space? Uh, I had the space anyways, like um, you can find it from their GitHub repo, but if you have seen it, like it's really amazing and uh, you can actually uh, create your own widths and heights, select your own widths and heights, and even like uh, dynamically change the number of iterations or how many steps it can use to generate that image specifically so when you and so on when the number of like iterations it uses it increases the quality of the image but for focus api you can only select uh, from like three or four kind of categories where it's either speed or quality and in between and uh, if you use automatic 11 it's better 
But for, from my side, it's just a, a highlight of how you can approach it. So I use the focus API, the one which is simpler. So just to go over the code, I defined uh, an image generator class, which basically uh, takes the like the asset suggestions part, a single asset suggestion from the concept part. So what it does is basically like uh, it takes that and through through here there is a generate uh, image functionality, and for like the main. The main call will be this one, the generate image part, and you just give it a location to, sort the, to store the image. It goes from like throughout the uh, frames or the elements of that uh, asset item. And if if the key starts with frame, as you remember, inside here, there are additional keys called even like explanation. So we just need the frame, 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 frame part which describe like the or have the image type for the category in the description so we just go through them and we identify the type and description and for each description what we do is like we call this uh, static function which is download image and we just give it that from the description and the store uh, the store location was provided so what it does, this one, is basically like we pass it the home and it has additional uh, additional parameters that they are already like uh, typed in and you don't need to particularly provide any additional values. You just, if you just provide the prompt, it will uh, handle it. And these are some of the additional parameters uh, that SAPI uh, like, uses. And um, just to show you, This is the one I'm using right now. It's like uh, I don't deploy it on my own, so they have a free available uh, replit uh, like deployment. So if you have a replit access, you can just use it without deploying the model at all. So as you can see here, if you, have, if you want to use it from an API standpoint, they have as an input schema where you provide like prompt, negative prompt, style selection, performance selection, and so on, and the aspect ratios. Like they they the, the pass the focus API only uses like selected uh, aspect ratios, like I said earlier, and it's a category based, not a continuous file and also like you can select this additional values and i only implemented some of them the main ones only that are necessary so from that what you can do is basically if you have uh, you will install the replit uh, module and using that you reference the deployment ID, that's the one I showed you just now. And you provide the additional parameters as inputs, and you just give it. And to run that, you just have to have uh, your like replicate, replicate API token uh, set. When you create an account, they just give you uh, a free API key, so there is no worries there. And you just have to refer to that and just send the request. So once you send the request, they basically give you or return the uh, PNG, the image link for you. So you can download that PNG and uh, store it on the specific file location for local usage later on. So that's what I basically did. I, I have also implemented a decode part. If you like, if the mod module that you use particularly like since uh, the image in a in, like imported in base 64 format and, and which is a string you have to decode it and uh, to, uh, you have to decode it to get the image so this part does that for you if you re uh, re retrieve a string base 64 uh, value for the generated image but if not and if it's uh, particularly sending uh, 
like a link of the created image. You can just like use that link, download that file, and save it uh, to your local file. So that's how it works. So, like for testing purposes, I just uh, used it here. I say image generated, like uh, generated image, it start being born. Then it downloads, like I command it to download the image and just show it. And uh, that's for separately testing it without actually passing it the, uh, the, the asset suggestion part. So if these functionalities, which are not strictly like, uh, aligned or necessarily should be used from a class, per, per, a class instance perspective, uh, I test it that way. And now, if you actually create uh, an instance of the class and uh, call the generate image, it basically does that and store the image for you on the specified file location. Here, uh, it's already, it has a default value, so it doesn't, I didn't pass the actual value and all the image that I generate are being stored here, as you can see. So that's part of the image generator. So from a pipeline perspective, we have the concept here, we just uh, drop it, or paste it and assign it to a variable, then we just instantiate uh, the concept uh, class, then we just pass it the, uh, like, as a suggestion part here, as a concept, because I named it there as a variable, and then we just call generate image. Then once you call the minute image, as you can see here, all the requests and the waiting is struck here. So it goes through, and once everything is done, all the images will be available in the particular location that you uh, you actually provide it when you special to the or, or when you call the actual uh, uh, so before we go to the next part, if you have any questions here regarding the image generator, anything of this, to be everything is clear and if you have any questions. Okay. I don't need to image for us suggestions of the frame that I'm going to like uh, for each frame, as you can see here. So see here, generating it. it goes through the entire uh, asset suggestion uh, keys and for each like for each key it first checks its phrase value so uh, go and this is an asset suggestion right? so i'm just providing it this part as a uh, as a concept, saying it as a concept, but it's basically a single yeah, asset suggestion. So I'm just providing this dictionary to it. So when it goes here uh, as items, basically it's it's frame, frame, and these values, another dictionary by which every category and its description is available. So once you go there, it's a type and description. And I'm, ju I'm just giving it the description here as a point description and providing it here from this point to description. So I'm generating for each frame, I'm generating each uh, like uh, image, like if it's here, for example, for frame one, there are three particular uh, images that need to be generated the product image, the LN text, and the load. So I'm generating three images for that three. Okay, um, I didn't see you guys raise your hands up. Okay. Um, like I said, how many images is this creating? We're creating uh, like image based on the frame. So if the frame had like 
three or four image we create three or four nodes between that frame. So it depends on the number of image for that frame that's set. Yeah, there's no need to specify the number. Uh, if you mean like from a, a model perspective, I'm just asking it to uh, give me a single image, like here, the image generator. Uh, okay. There is no like, I'm not providing that actual input, but you can see here the image number, it's, it's default value is one. So I didn't provide that. And I'm, it's just generating a single image for me. And I'm just taking that image as a minute. Here you can see it here. Like once the image generator outputs the value, it just provides a list of links. So if you say generate me three images, it gives you three links of the generated image. But based on the default value, it's just generating a single image, and I'm taking that link the first on the first uh, index of the list. Mm -hmm. So can we maybe see some image? Sure, I'll show you. I uh, will generate just now. Uh, uh, okay, I'll do it. This is Should I continue? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you are using the focus API, right? Yeah. So, how, how, like, how fast is it in generating the image? Well, we can check it in a few months. Um, like, for example, um, let's take this one. Let's say this is the first one. Uh, mid generator part. So now it's generating, right? So let's see. Uh -huh, okay, my Q has reached a limit basically. But it's what it was just generating. I think there is a limit for the of the amount that you can use. And I need some type of data. Okay, but it should have worked. Um, it's just it's testing it right now, but it doesn't take a lot of time. It's like around four for this. I'm pretty sure it only took like uh, two minutes for this image. So it's two to four and three seven minutes. So it shouldn't take more than two minutes for seven minutes. And it depends like on the quality that you choose. So if you can see here, like uh, the image generator, it says quality and have selected quality. So it shouldn't take that much time for you guys. Yeah, so, so since there is a limit in how, how many images we can generate, like as we are seeing now, maybe. Yeah, but I, I think uh, like the Ten Academy should would provide you uh, like a deployment area, right? Yeah, so, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, like uh, we were asked, like, how big should the instance be so yeah. that we can generate image? And I was researching on that, and like the, the biggest, I think the biggest requirement is having a, a, a GPU, mm -hmm. a GPU program. So, I was wondering, like, did you have like any suggestions for us? Uh, uh, a T4, okay, sure. A T4 GPU is not running now, and I have this of this in the like uh, collab, Google Collab, uh, uh, not on the transcribe. So I think a T4 GPU is not more than eight GBs, right? I'm not really sure, but uh, it's good enough. Oh, so 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 the the GPU in the Google Colab, I think it's yeah. sixteen GB. Okay, it's sixteen GB. Okay, so I don't think it, it even uses the entire sixteen GB, but um, even yeah. here, let, let me show you. It's more or less better if you use the the automatic eleven for more for yeah. it has more capability. 
So yes. as you can see here, they have already deployed it on Google Cloud and they have run it. One of them, I'm pretty sure. And they tested it and they have other like even ways, like if you have an instance on some other uh, like Azure or SageMaker on AWS, you can use a deployment here. And it has, it has pretty much a pretty detailed way of like how you can deploy it. And, uh, It should go there, but wait. Yeah. So if you follow this uh, call out, you have the entire way of how to do it. The entire steps required. Even if you just uh, like uh, run the entire uh, hot snippets here, it will just deploy it on Google Colab for you and have a test endpoint for you available here. So it's pretty much straightforward from here, and you can replicate this way of um, deployment on either AWS or other instances that's provided for you. Okay, so having at least 16 GB VRAM and uh, on an AWS instance. Any, any recommendations on Zara? Like, uh, like I'm pretty sure for focus, uh, like a 6 GB RAM is 6 GB and then GPU RAM is more than enough, and you can work on it. But if you are accessing it or using it across multiple teams, maybe it might be slower for you. So maybe two instances. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hi, Mikael. Uh, so when you generate the uh, frame components, uh, like the background, the tagline, uh, et cetera, how do you save it? Uh, is it going to be with a random name? Uh, or can we give that that um, key to save the image? Because later when we uh, compose, uh, we need to kind of know the, the its category. Uh, and yeah, how did you save the, those uh, components in, in a frame? Uh, hello? Oh, yes. My bad. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was okay. <laughs> uh, so, like, as you can see, uh, from a co from a concept spot, like you are yes. reading each image. Uh, yes. Iteratively, right? One at a time. Yes. So yeah. if you go from frame one, you just read product image first and read on text and that will go for it. So what the easiest step would be rather than uh, having or creating an image name for it. You can have it, but rather the simplest way is if you just use that uh, like uh, order and uh, return the generated image based on that order. So when you read and uh, when you read the concepts and produce the, the image results in that similar order, they are matching for you. So it won't be a problem. Uh, so if like you see when I download the image here and or when I generate it here, when I generate it, I just get a, a link only, right? Like I said. Yes. So what I do is like I download the image, like you can see here, I take the URL to the safe path. The safe path yeah. is already the one that I got the 
the actual default value dot slash image. So mm -hmm. what I do is just get the URL. Then if the URL is correct, the, the status code is correct and is successful, what I do is just save the image. And what I do, I hold the type, like this this part returns two things, the URL and the save pass, basically the location of the new uh, image. Uh, and how I did it is basically if I have a location where I need to store it or the folder uh, has, and yeah. the actual image that's coming has uh, a, a base name. Basically, if you have, let's like, say, for example, yes. something, something, uh, uh, if you have this file or you are say you are red, yeah, the base name extract this part, the type dot text part. So if I join them, basically I'm getting uh, if I join them, extract that one and replace this with the current location I want to save it right here. Yes. Slash image type text. Mm -hmm. So now I have a new location where I can store it and also name it based on the actual naming that they followed. Uh, when the Focus API created the image, they just named it. So I can use that name and just save it. So I don't need an actual naming, uh, naming scheme for it. I just use their naming and just store the URL and save as of the local uh, local by location. So I have, I have here the URL and save pass, and once it's generated here, I'm just uh, appending like to the frame of the generated uh, image. In, a, in an order, I'm just uh, adding in a template the type in the download image, which is the URL and the actual uh, local file pass location. So I'm just following the order. Okay, okay. That will differentiate it. Thank you. Okay. Mubarak? Mubarak, uh, am I ordered? Yeah. Mm, I, I tried uh, Automatic 11.11 running locally, and uh, also I tried to uh, focus on Google Colab, and the image quality of uh, the focus was uh, good comparing with automatic 11.11 and also uh, I don't think the co the cola version of automatic 11 is uh, free so what yeah free? it's not free uh, like focus has an internal GPT to uh, prompt optimizer inbuilt so even if you give it uh, like a general prompt it will make the like the generated image better Curate so the GitHub repo like it just says uh, even in the reading part it just gives you uh, uh, a wild uh, or something then it kind of generates an amazing image a, a well thought out from the image it's good in that side but from uh, like a configuration part the uh, automatic level that is better and you can to improve it. Uh, increase the steps that we use. Like uh, uh, by default, I think it uses 20. Uh, you can increase that to 50 and also increase, uh, um, I mean, like make the prompt better. If you do that and uh, with the additional properties that you can change, it's dynamicity. It's better, but you choose. Uh, I won't explore that much. So find. Uh, the best one, go with the best one that you think. And for, from an, an employ, uh, deployment standpoint, uh, like to go through this collab and uh, replicate it onto uh, a AWS instance, I think you can uh, run it, uh, get it running you know, in like five minutes or two minutes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyone has questions? Okay, go ahead.
¿no? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I see you show us some of the generated images and examine how much. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. So, mm, the effectiveness is a good question, by the way. I was running from the same, like, uh, similar problems. As you can see, I haven't uh, implemented the text generation part. And as I, as I said, like, uh, on Monday, the image generation part, uh, the text generation part for Stable diffusion models is so bad, and as you can see, it missed up the entire part. And uh, some of the images, as you can see, like these ones, like I've been generating multiple times. And I think the quality is not that bad, but um, it's a working process, and it can be improved. Yeah. I think maybe if it allows me again, let's try this part. Yeah, I think I can use it in past my limit. Uh, do you recommend us to generate the text using? text generation models instead of uh, image generation models and embed it using OpenCV or like that? Uh, uh, like, I haven't particularly explored on that way. Uh, I haven't even checked text uh, diffusion models. I'm not sure. But from what I've seen, from initial thought standpoint, like, I think, straightforward way of generating uh, text would be enough and uh, using even like pillow only would get you like uh, a good a good text generator and give you a good result but if you find a better way please uh, yes. okay um it's going to be hard to explain it if uh, I don't get my earlier like runs. It's going to be hard to show you from this side, but from a, an image composer part, like you are tasked with uh, uh, generating a model, but uh, generating a model would take a lot of time from my uh, endpoint. So uh, what I did was find an algorithm way of uh, actually allocating the image. So what I did was basically like for each for each category is find vertical positions and horizontal positions where they are like mostly used. So for example, for robots, more or less used on the top left side. So consider like uh, the vertical position is uh, like one to three. So one is top, two is mid, and three is bottom. So as you can see, I have categorized each and uh, provided the list values. So for example, the city button can be on the top part, on the middle part, and on the bottom part, and so on. And similarly for the horizontal uh, position, one meaning left, two meaning mid, and three meaning right. And categorized them similarly, and uh, I've declared a class here, which basically uh, uh, receives the widths and heights of the actual plate that you are trying to create, and the uh, image, uh, the image that we have, we just created using the image generator as a list of uh, frame images. So, like. Uh, for each frame, we are just basically like creating uh, uh, tuples, uh, right? We are returning a list of tuples for each frame. So here, as we as we are returning it back then, like here, as you can see, it's frame of image. 
So each frame image basically means a typical of categories and string string, which basically means this is the type and this is the URL and this is the actual uh, image parts, local image parts. So we have a list. So basically, if you have three images, this will be a list of three uh, three tuples, three distinct tuples of the same images. So if we combine them again into an, a big huge list, we have list for each image uh, for each frames. So if we have three frames, we have three lists. Basically, all list of tuples. So that's how it uh, accepts the values. And we set the width and height of the image. So we just store them. And this, the gate image position segments, what I do is basically subdivide the actual width and height into nine, nine positions, nine segments, whereby the, uh, uh, on, a, on a given percentage. So the percentages are given in two, in two ways uh, for a vertical. Uh, center part and the end the end parts as you can see here the view and the view the outer sides and the middle part so the middle part i wanted to hold 60 percent of the actual uh, height and the outer parts uh, 20 20 percent so in total it will be 40 percent and so on i followed for the similarly for the horizontal part as well and this part just checks if the actual uh, uh, divisions of the entire part or the, given here the classification percentage uh, classifications add up and are not uh, greater than one and just like that we just subdivide into uh, the percentage values and we have the vertical segment the first part so for example if you say that uh, 300 it will be 0 to 60, 60 to 240, and from 240 into 300. So the 20, 20 persons will be the 60, 60 parts, which will add up to 120, and the 240 part will be the middle part, which is like 240, uh, I think 60, 240, 180. 180 part will be the next part. So like that, we generate like 0 to 60, 60 to 180, 180 to uh, uh, 300, I think. Yeah. So like that, we have the vertical segments, similarly the horizontal segments. Then we create the actual segments, the nine, uh, the nine values uh, represented by like uh, Two points, basically, the, uh, two, uh, like the starting uh, uh, vertical segment, the starting horizontal segment, and the ending vertical and horizontal segment. So we have, we generate the segments here. So basically, once we generate these segments, it's identifying uh, or based on these, these values, Based on this one, and, uh, and the category that we get, we identify what possible vertical positions and horizontal positions are possible for uh, each individual. And, um, so, as you can see here, what I do is like, uh, this is the generator, it calls the self uh, component. Compose frames uh, function here, and basically this compose frames populate this generated frames file, and we return the such You can add other like, additional uh, improvements in this part as well. So for the compose frame, what it does is basically it initializes the generated frames, uh, go through each frame, and first identify like the, uh, the placements. And for each like uh, element, if it's a background, it, sh it shouldn't be placed on a particular location, but rather it should be the image which holds or which is, which fills the, fills the entire like background part. So if we have a background image, we just remove that and we uh, append the items to be placed. So if we have the, now we have identified the background and the other items to be placed, what we do is like 
we complete the positions for each placement data. Specifically, as you have heard, um, as we like when I pass these uh, these frames earlier, we are passing the triple. Basically, the first uh, the first value is the category. So I'm selecting the first category here because the complete position works on based on like the category of the actual uh, uh, element. So for each, like, uh, this is a list, a list of the categories. So for each category, what I do is go across the vertical positions, identify each like possible vertical position, horizontal positions, and like using the other tools, uh, create the possibility, all the possibilities of the, the combination of the vertical options and the horizontal options. So say, for example, a certain item can be uh, on, on the vertical side, uh, on top or middle, so one and two, and on the horizontal side, it can be positioned on, only on the, the middle part, which is two. So now we have one, two, and two. two. So it's, this is basically creating that. And I, once I do that, I, I append the combinations for each element and send it back again. And like once we have the positions, the positions, the positions, I kind of select diverse positions. Basically, what it does is check its frequency as much as possible. We don't want multiple images uh, located or placed at the same value, but it's still a possibility. And uh, like we, or I also add the randomizer whereby if like we have uh, multiple uh, positions, possible positions with the same frequency, we kind of select uh, randomly where to put it. Uh, basically, uh, uh, like using the complete position, the diverse positions, and uh, once we have that, now we have a position where to put it. We have to calculate, like I said last time, we have to calculate the size, and like we have to adjust or give it uh, an alignment uh, like we might center it uh, adjust it to or align it to the left side or the right side and so on the, this function does that specifically so for each provided element uh, and a given padding it goes through each section and um, like it tries to even if it has different elements and so on tries to uh, adjust and calculate a starting position for each image and uh, a possible uh, a possible extent height that we can use. And as a final output, as you can see, we're providing a starting point for each image and its possible dimension, the dimension it should use. So uh, once we have that, can see here we have we have these adjusted positions now we need like uh, the image location here the image location we need to extract the image location and the starting point from here the adjusted positions the starting point and the image width and height so it's just a zipping mechanism here to create a final uh, list or uh, like uh, a tuple of list and then uh, a list of tuples basically whereby each uh, each within each frame each element is passed and their specific starting point and dimensions are stored within the actual tuple. So once I have that it's basically done. Now what like I have the, for each frame uh, I have a list which provides which holds tuples and each tuple has the image path, the, the starting point like, to, to position that actual image, and then the uh, like the width or height it, sh it should should have. So once uh, once we have those placement values for each frame, what you can do is just generate the frames. So I have this create combined image. 
what it basically does is like if it retrieves the, like it needs as a parameter the, back, the background path and the elements like I described now. And first it opens the background path and uh, holds it. And using that background image, it adds all the elements, also the entire framework and its elements and positions each uh, each image onto the actual uh, background image. So before we do that, though, like we have to resize those image, we have already uh, received like the target with the target height or the dimension that we should follow. So we need to resize the image. Basically, uh, like we hold the aspect ratio and find the minimum like amount to multiply the actual image with the ratio. This ratio. So if we uh, find that new width and new height based on that ratio, by just using the resize method, we can actually resize that image into the actual uh, uh, like dimension that we need. So doing that, we resize it then. But uh, using the resized uh, image, we just paste it into the actual uh, background uh, image. So that's what it's doing here. And uh, oh, like the background image is now turning to be like the actual frame that we need, uh, uh, holding all the entire uh, additional uh, image or the elements that need to be uh, added to the actual frame. So this part will return the uh, final image. So once that's done, uh, as you can see here, we are just appending. So as I said earlier, we are following uh, order-based scheme. So we're just appending for each frame. So the first frame starts here. So when uh, it finishes the generation, it will be appended here. So for frame one, we still make sense. So that's how, like, programmatically, uh, I generated uh, or composed the image. It's not that great um, results, but if I could have shown you, I think it would have been better. <laughs> Let's uh, start and try to once more. Yeah, still saying no. Okay. Um, yeah. How can we do the composing part without using a different yeah. model and use the trained yeah. coordinates of the specific type of image to place them in the frame using CV2? It, uh, like, I uh, didn't say about like using a diffusion model specifically, uh, but you can can train your own model based on the data we have given you last time and use that as well. And, um, and yeah, you can use CV2 to, to place them there as well. But as I said, like you need to find uh, either when you generate this image, uh, specify the uh, size the dimensions, the width and height. And if you can do that previously or after like uh, identifying the location and identifying an actual dimension that it should use, or your model should uh, specifically uh, define that for you, uh, while like giving you the actual position also provide you the uh, necessary dimensions as well. And sure, you can use CV2, CV2 as well. Uh, Rodolf, if I pronounce your name correctly, <laughs> yeah, Milky. Okay, please continue. Can, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. So, uh, I look at the concept, and it seems like uh, you have already defined the concept, it's not like uh, what we have uh, in in the JSON file. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, the second part, yeah. Here, this is the second and the third part I did. But this one is yeah. the one that's given to me. So I was just testing it out. That's yeah. why I changed it. 
So this is why it is uh, defined by yourself. So it doesn't contain any more uh, the implementation, the access uh, suggestion, and other components. Uh, so finally, uh, sorry. What did you say? Hello? Let me know when I can continue. Yeah, yeah please continue now. So, so my question is to know if you, uh, if you will forget the JSON file you you provided, and uh, and then you will tell us uh, which component we will take from that, and ourselves you will redefine the concept in our code. Is what I want to understand. Oh, okay. So from the data we have given you sometimes like the categories kind of uh, mismatch like some like for example for the CTA part some are said CTA takers and CTA button but they should follow the same way of uh, like same way of labeling them so one of the things that you need to change is that part so either you should use CTA takers or CTA button like such kind of problems and uh, if you like uh, implemented or used used or you can use a little link to improve the prompts and that was one of the tasks as well as an optional one and if you use that part you can get a better prompt and uh, improve the like the asset situation provided you with from as well so that's what I basically did. Uh, I didn't write the code, but I just prompted ChatGPT and changed the uh, assist suggestion into a more favorable. Code. So that's it. Yeah. Hello. It was a little bit noisy, the background, so I didn't fully hear everything you said. Okay, um, so that's why. But basically, what I said is one of the tasks is uh, to improve the prompts so you can use any LLM uh, models that you, have, uh, that you have access to, like improve the prompts. Uh, but when we provided you the data, sometimes the categories kind of mismatching. Some categories that are not present might be. Uh, like you might see them there, so you have to kind of uh, fix those issues on the data. Say, for example, one of the issues that I saw was there was a CTA text and the CTA button. It should either be uh, one of them. The label should be consistent across the board. That's why. So if you replace both with CTA or both with CTA text, so that's what it is. Is that clear yeah, kind of, a kind of good. Uh, please, uh, can you go in the can can you share your screen and go to the concept? Yeah. So, uh, when we you can you can see that we have a frame one, okay, and we have background and uh, a CTA button, yeah. but then from, from frame two we have interactive element and background so uh so the way you you get this one uh, is is by by providing the the first one to an nlm or what i'm kind of confused so i just want to know how you you come with this concept oh okay yeah we have an nlm basically separately referring to our historic data and using that we come up with this data. Please can you say that again? Okay, so basically we are just like like you said, we are using the LLMs, but integrating the LLM and uh, uh, using our historic data of our previous uh, creatives, we generate these concepts basically. Oh, okay, 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 good. Great. If that's clear, um, someone gave me their new key.
Uh, let's see. Give me a moment. This should be. It's just, I don't think it's uh, the key per se. It says failed to generate mid the task you has reached a limit. I'm pretty sure it's not from my end. And uh, it's from replicate. But sure, I'll uh, give you the record and uh, that, that doesn't work. No worries. So, yeah, let's see. No worries. So, if you have any questions, let's uh, continue. I think a lot of people are using the replicate and uh, that's why it's still working. Or maybe, maybe. Yes, <laughs> 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 Okay, this one is working. So we can see, let's wait and see what you do. It's, it's around uh, yeah, seven minutes, like I said earlier. And we, uh, until it finishes, let's at least. Okay, uh, Brahan. Brahan, are you there? What's wrong? I don't know what's wrong with my voice. W would you please uh, go back to the this code and show us the concepts.json file that you shared? Uh, yeah, the, this concepts.json file. Oh, okay. The one, uh, the one I'm working yeah. on, or this one? Yeah, this it can be it can be this also. So in here we have asset suggestions, and then in each of them we can see that it's it's the asset categories, right? There is another file which is being shared, which is uh, categories.txt, and it shows twenty three categories, but yeah. it, it doesn't match with these categories. In here there are a lot which doesn't exist in here in there, and some of them match, but most of them doesn't match. And in your implementation, you try to give them a default positioning, best positioning for the, I think you used the 23 categories, which has been in categories to text file. So how do you uh, align them because they're different? Uh, yes. Do you get my question? Yeah, exactly. Uh, 
after going through the data, like, uh, these concepts that are generated were basically partly uh, from a, a test a test run that we had. And uh, through, through tests, you know, like sometimes the prompts don't work properly and uh, through improvement, we get the best like, output. And some of the like uh, outputs, are including the concepts, but are not like following the categories. Like I said earlier, I think uh, someone asked it earlier, it's asked me if I changed the assets and gestures. And yeah, uh, so you, you could change them. Like make it follow, change the categories into the category that we have given, even from the categories perspective, because like it's the uh, asset suggestion that we have been given are kind of limited. There are around, I think, 150, and times three, maybe like, uh, say, if you, if you around it, it's around 360. And uh, if you can use like similar text, uh, similar text ways of mechanisms that express those similar uh, categories and change them to the ones that are available, you can fix that uh, problem. Okay. And yeah, my, my yes. other question, my other question is can we um, find and focus model, which is a stable diffusion model? Uh, our data set, our given asset, uh, is not going to be helpful first because they, they don't have any kind of representative data and clear categorization. So uh, what I was thinking is it's not generating the best image, right? So what can we do about it? If we can find can the model in a way it can generate more specific and can, it can we can make it better, that, that was my thinking. And so is that possible? And we don't have any data set for that. This The given data set is not gonna be representative even if we, able to extract uh, it's going to only let's say we, we can get let's say engagement buttons or call to action buttons some backgrounds uh, other than that i don't think we're going to get a representative data set even if we are capable of fine timing the so uh, what do you have do you have any idea on this and one more thing to add not to talk again uh, would you please share this uh, um, file that you've been working on i think it's helpful if it's possible uh, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, like even if, say, like for, from the data perspective, even if we didn't keep you the data, it would be like um, much problematic. Having something to start with is much better than having nothing. So I think from a data perspective, what you can do is rather than use, like I said, you know, use another regular uh, and kind of create a prompt for yourself where it considers the entire concepts that's generated, like even include this explanation and uh, what it means, how the concept is currently implemented, what scene is supposedly needed or wants to be created on that way. If you provide it to uh, an LLB, it can understand that and even uh, improve the the, the asset, asset description for, it, for the each individual one. And even if you think like uh, previously, uh, last time someone asked a, a good question, basically why don't we generate the uh, image together as a whole? And I gave like an answer of uh, text are bad and uh, for image quality, separating them is uh, much better. But even you can uh, separate the text part and, or, and try uh, to compose all the image together within a single, within a single like description and uh, generate that image uh, separately. So I think as a, as a suggestion, uh, these are uh, some of the ideas that come to mind and it would be helpful in this situation. And uh, from a, uh, the code perspective, I think they can share it with them. Uh, I, will, uh, I will share it to uh, one of the, to the current repositories. I think they will share it to you guys. Okay, this is the running six minutes. Okay. Uh, anyone has, has a question? Thank <laughs> you.
in the challenge group, uh, YOLO is mentioned uh, as a tool to use. And, uh, and do you believe YOLO will help for this project? If it does, and how can we use it? Uh, maybe, like, um, in regards to, like, coming up with uh, identifying, like, evaluation mechanism, maybe. For example, when I mean this is, like, what I mean by this is, like, if you identify the number, like, the labels of the items that are included within each frame, maybe that way it can help you guys. So for object detection, basically you always widely use for object detection purposes. And uh, for the archive data, maybe you can use it there. Uh, but from a direct perspective, I'm not pretty sure how you can use it because uh, I don't think of it uh, to start off. Yeah, uh, can you relate uh, to this project if you can? Yeah, like we haven't worked on it. We, it's just an idea of how we can approach it. So yeah, you're just helping us here. You're laying out the groundwork for us. So I think the exposure also will help you guys as well. And uh, like uh, seeing what what's possible or what what will happen in an actual uh, job and what kind of tasks or uh, like uh, kind of challenge that can uh, you you stumble upon will definitely help you to understand those kind of circumstances really okay thank you uh, abraham Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Uh, did you not? Uh, shall I repeat again? Mm -hmm. Shall I repeat the question again? I thought you heard me. I wanted no, to I ask didn't. where we will be performing the EDA. Oh, okay, the EDA part basically is just for exploring the image. So um, basically, for it's, it's separately uh, or crucial for the archive part. So identifying which images are uh, uh, present on the landing and uh, which images are uh, uh, like available on the end frame. They are not labeled for you that way. So like. During that part, you can use EDA the analysis part in detail and identifying those those image which which images are available will help you or uh, categorize the data for training purposes later. Uh, so does that be, <laughs> yeah, we will be training the a model using that. Uh, cleaned or EDA performed the data? Yeah, the ideal way would be that, but if you find a better way, even a programmable way, you can, you can, you are free to use whatever uh, possible way, but still, like, you want the best solution. Mm -hmm. So, like, from, from, like, uh, surely, like, the best, the best way would be learning from previous uh, instances or previous examples that you have, and the programmatic approach won't be like uh, like uh, at least the latest way of organizing things. You can't update it as much as possible, and it won't be scalable at that. So having the uh, like a model training a model would be the best mm -hmm. approach. Uh, 
<laughs> the speak of my machine, I'm not using my machine to generate the image, I'm just making an API call, so it doesn't matter. But I have a very low speak uh, machine at the moment, I'm using a low speak. You won't believe it if I told you. <laughs> doesn't matter if you host an API. Uh, okay, it's going to come. Okay. Um, this is taking a lot of time, really. Maybe it's just because I changed it into quality. Uh, but I hope, I hope it's okay. Uh, till then, like, let's just go through the storyboard. Uh, for the storyboard part, I just uh, like gave it image, a list of image. So basically, the frame image will be put here, a pillow image. Uh, all the generated pyramids and like as you have seen last time our storyboards were just created horizontally where each frame is uh, placed uh, one at a time so it basically does that it implements a vertical padding in the separation space and also has a change of background color uh, going through the image it calculates uh, like total width and height and using that with the height, we kind of uh, create one big background. Then using, by calculating offsets uh, for each frames, we just paste them like before. And uh, yeah, I can, I can even show you like this one working separately here. Ah, okay, I changed this part. Mm. So as you can see here, like, for a sample image, I'm just generating the version of this. So this will be for how to do So if you have any questions regarding the storyboard, you are like that. Forward. <laughs> okay. Uh, give us a bit explanation about the type of video process. Okay. Uh, should be an or we just uh, I say that the most important part there is to like identify two things, right? Uh, whenever you are, like collect data, it's basically based on the prediction data that you want. So what we ideally want to predict is basically the position, the position of that particular image and also um, uh, the, uh, the dimensions, right? So what you can do is like in each, in each actual frame, you can search for that actual image using CV2, CV2 tool or uh, like uh, someone mentioned it earlier, like you can search an image inside an image and get those positions. Uh, and even you can segment the positions as well and say like, as I did earlier, like you can segment it into nine positions and say, <clears throat> uh, when you find that image, uh, uh, categorize that actual point into uh, a segment. So you have a single uh, label for that. Uh, through like one through nine. Uh, so one way you can extract that based on uh, image to image search. Uh, and uh, for for sizing, like if the dimensions are changing and when you search the actual image inside the uh, other image and you find if you find like the uh, change in dimensions you can use that thing as well. So through the AD you can extract these essential data, which will be used to predict the actual values later on once you have trained it. Uh, 
So I guess that covers it for you guys. Um, okay. Any other question? On which part of the Uh, the, 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 the data that you used for prompting is the concept part, specifically the suggestions. But for uh, improving the prompt, you can use the entire concept. But like I said, the archive data, archive data is the one you use for training the model. Uh, it's a repetition of the one. Oh, okay. Fine. You want to go for finding the stable diffusion model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, but you need a lot of data already. And we don't have an associated concept to uh, like frame data. If you had that or asset to frame the uh, data, you can surely like uh, fine tune that data. And uh, I'm not sure even how they, without that data, how you can But if you do have that data, or if you can generate that data, yes, but I'm not sure how can, like, uh, the resources available to you. So I did a lot of resources to do this, actually. I'm not sure. Like, Use any any approach of uh, would give you the best output. That's what matters. We don't we we like we haven't worked on it and we don't know what's the best solution out there and we're just exploring. We didn't even like start uh, in detail going into, into detail. So uh, your assumptions are as good as all. So yeah, uh, do whatever. You want to. Oh. This is taking okay. the okay. 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 Okay, let's wait a bit more, or I will just stop it and uh, go for a, a speedy mode. If you have any questions, any other questions? Okay, maybe let's just stop this and uh, yeah. Okay, Brian, please. Yes, discussion. Yeah. Double band mentioned a couple of times to use um to create some kind of model given the, given our asset data set to extract their let's say their color their positioning and their a uh, lot of things and then to are they at the end of the day to use uh, yolo or some other unique object detection and segmentation models and then um, using them to do something something which i don't know and I try to go over the documentation and I get it to be a contradicting factor uh, with the with the thing that you're right now saying and then last time also and and how can you I don't know make a bridge between these two things and that my real question to you right now is like I mentioned this because I want to ask you that let's say it's it's an object detection model and let let's say if if we even basically we try we tried the model to detect and it, it's not it's not even detecting 
in a good way, but it, it detects um, for instance cars, persons, some some generic, very generic categories. So it has to be trained with our custom data set in a way to use it. Even if we have that data, how, how it can be helpful in, for our for our case and for our uh, tasks. So would you explain your perspective on this? Yeah, I'm good. Like I said earlier, from a YOLO perspective, like as you say, it's very limited. Because I think like it's like seventy or some generic categories that it can identify, and uh, in my name for this particular uh, use case. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure from what perspective uh, uh, I was talking to you guys or discussing the use of YOLO. Maybe like it's better if you ask them, but from my what I've seen so far, I don't think I like, haven't thought about using Kyogre. It's rather like uh, when you make into image search uh, algorithm or and using the given CV to like uh, So I hope that answered the question for you. And um, lastly. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to follow up on Brahan's question because we have been having that discussion. And uh, so for the, uh, I'm going to risk asking you exactly the same question that I did last time, which is uh, what do we, uh, how do we utilize the data and not the concepts.json data, but the archive data that you've given us, like, the data for the pictures and all that. Uh, how do we utilize that? And the only answer we actually got was maybe we can use it to train a model. But outside that, we really don't know how to use it. So in 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 your uh, when you put it in the challenge document, just want to know like uh, how you thought about like how we could utilize the pictures that were already there. Sure. If my question makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, uh... I thought I answered it earlier. Uh, like I said, particularly, uh, basically, the model that you want is to a model which can identify the image position and the dimensions that you want, like, to put when you like when you actually put that image in that frame. What is the dimension and the location, right? Is that correct? Yeah. So yeah. what you have in each folder is basically like you have to consider two images specifically, the end frame and the landing. You have checked that, right? Yeah. So if you open those images uh, and uh, open the other, the remaining image, some of the image, like they, they can be categorized in, in like uh, or be found in either of the image or all the rest image I mean. So if you have a landing and the end frame and say image one, it will be available on either like uh, the landing uh, image or the end frame image. That's right. Uh, you have to take that. Um, have you checked that? Uh, can you repeat? I'm sorry. I, I think I was breaking down or maybe you were breaking down. Okay. Um, like, uh, you have, you, in, in these uh, folders, you have two images, particularly the landing and the end frame. And the rest of yes. the images are present in either the end frame or the landing frame. Okay. Oh, all Those of images. the images. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they are found in either of them. So, if you use that uh, particular data to like uh, collect data, whereby like uh, it's this image and I have this frame, it's being positioned on this part. It's being positioned on this part, and it's a dimension in this. So if you collect that data and have a dimensions and uh, like I said earlier, uh, based on a positioning, like if you sort the image within the with, with another image and find within oh. the landing image the other image, you can find the position, right? So you can collect yes. that position yes. and segment it, like I did earlier, uh, label it into one to nine values, and you have 
uh, data to train a model on. So that's uh, an initial way of approaching it. And I think I mentioned it earlier. Yeah, I'm sorry, I must have missed it. But yeah, that makes perfect sense. OK, thank you. Sure. Last time, uh, OK, this one. Okay. <laughs> So it seems like I was using the uh, the fastest, uh, like the speed speed value. Uh, Once again, this is happening. Let's use the anime. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I should have included an auto reloader here. Hopefully it will do it faster this time. Should be done by now, by the way. Single image will not take this much time. Uh, I don't know why it's taking this much time, but just let me give the quote to you guys when it's okay. And uh, if you replace the uh, model, and even if like your model returns, your diffusion model returns a base image, you can uh, use that decoder. So let me just send you the code uh, and uh, you can work on it, guys. That's much better, I think. The main thing is that it works. So, yeah, I think that will be all if you don't have uh, any questions, guys. And I hope everything is clear now. Okay, so Uh, I just wanted to say maybe if we could have you back on Friday or Thursday uh, if we have any questions that would be nice mm -hmm. I can't promise you that but sure I'll try, I'll try my best and just prepare your questions, even like uh, maybe send it through a text to uh, one of the representatives and they can answer it and get back to you. Maybe that's much uh, easier. Okay. Um, uh, Abel, please go ahead, please. So, uh, one last question. Uh, um, so, basically, uh, what do you think is 
the most uh, crucial part of this uh, process? Uh, so is it, is it uh, composing or the generating? Because I see that the generating will totally impact the outcome as, as well. And also the composing will kind of uh, create uh, an arranged or a less uh, giving sense uh, in frame at the end of the day. So what do you think is the crucial part from this whole process? It's, it's the composition part, surely. And uh, yeah, and um, it might be like, I don't, like, I don't try to address it from a particular side. Say, for example, after I'll handle it after generating the image generation, maybe even the pipeline that we created might, might be wrong. So, like, uh, maybe rather rather than separately generating this entire frames and composing them again, maybe the best solution might be uh, like uh, using an element and uh, making the concepts or like that's a suggestion, turning them into a single uh, prompt and generate that image with with the uh, like exclusion of the text part. The text part cannot be added into the actual like uh, uh, and the stable diffusion models. So that's that might be even a solution. So I can't surely tell you which one is the better or, or the best way or the ideal way, but yeah, the heart of the problem, like I said uh, last time when I introduced you to the challenge, is basically the English composition. And I think it, it has run and uh, like using the image composer, as you can see. Like, uh, I have an image composer with um, the head and uh, the generated image, and passing them as a, uh, as, a, as a list. And as you can see here are the generated frames. I'm just showing you one of the generated frames here. It says two, generated frame two. And as you can see, the anime, it's, I think it's bad, but like we are positioned here, if you consider this logo, if this is a logo, this is the background uh, image of uh, music or something. And I don't know what this is even. Uh, even the sort of thing, what does it say? Yeah, it's, uh, is it the animation part? It's just weird. It's weird. But this is one of the results. So we combine them like this with the story part. We have this. As you can see, the genetic limits are much worse, bad. And uh, I've also tried like the part where we kind of encapsulate all, all of the concepts through a single book. Maybe if generates it's faster enough, I can show it to you guys. And uh, it's you, you never know it's a trial and uh, taste uh, mechanism, so uh, try as oh, much as possible. Yeah. And, uh, so, is the best option. Yeah. So, the thing is, uh, so theoretically, uh, you have done every, every steps correctly. You have uh, input the prompts correctly. You have kind of created in a way to position the, the components in the frame and also the story watch. But the output is, as you can see, it's kind of distorted or uh, not to the point. So I believe uh, uh, the goal is to kind of generate the examples that you, you guys gave us, which is the storyboards. So uh, do, we can try many approach in order to enhance the output. I believe that's the total aim of this project. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, to do that. Like, to be realistic. Like, within a week, the expectation is not that much yeah. either. Like identifying or coming up with a, like innovative mechanism is the idea, the idea, like output of this challenge, right? Okay. So don't consider it from an input and output perspective only, but from a, like an approach standpoint. All right. So we just have to strategize on how to make the output better, and yeah. you have to experiment uh, various methods or try to create a perfect uh, 
sense logic or implementation. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to do. Thank you. No worries. Any questions before we finish this session? If not, let's finish it for the image to be generated. Let me just show you the, like the frames generated when when all the like uh, prompts are combined together. I just use generally need to do this. So yeah, create Sudan. We have the composer. The image generated. Let's see. This is one of the images generated. This model, the animation model is, I think, bad. But at least, you see, like, you can get this kind of image. They're totally like different, as you can see. And uh, yeah, explore, find the, the best uh, way to approach it. And uh, yeah, amazes. With uh, like a unique way of uh, handling this task. So that's that will be all for today, guys. Uh, thank you for having me here once more. Yeah. Bye.